Many thanks for joining me on Off the Press this morning, the program where we tell you all about the headlines, dissect it and make sense of it. And with me this morning is a political analyst, uh, Moses Naikbe. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And thanks for coming also. Uh, so this morning we have um, lots of newspaper. We have an addition from the usual ones. We have The Nation, we have This Day, we have The Punch, we have Vanguard. And we have The Guardian also to be uh, reviewed this morning. We shall begin with The Nation. And the headlines, the big story from there is um, we see the picture story of President Muhammadu Buhari and Siri Ramaphosa. And of course, this is about the meeting, the two-day visit. And it says, former Ad Senator uh, Mojish Mojisholuwa Akin Fenwa dies at 89. That's on page 43. Uh, somehow he made it it's on the front page, so that got my attention. Stalemate, stalemate over new wage. Uh, Ngige, to meet unions' demands, uh, government needs to sack. Then TUC said, we want urgent action before next week. And then we have uh, picture stories of dignitaries, of dignitaries uh, honoring Akin Rade on his uh, 80th birthday. That's on page eight also. Now, six girls have been ab abducted from Kaduna School. That's on page five. And then three 44-year-old tortoise dies in Ogbomosho. Piece of history lost there. That's on page five. Now, Buhari Ramaphosa signed 32 agreements. Xenophobia victims may get compensation. May get compensation, it says. Uh, the paper is already displayed. You can see for yourself. And on the top page is Okoracha cut number of senators and reps. That's uh, on page 39. Let's lead cost cutting. That's good. And then Buhari to present 10.2 trillion naira budget on Tuesday. Lawmakers pass MTEF. That's on page 43. An ex junior soccer, uh, soccer star Isaac Promise dies. Uh, that sad story is on page 47. It says, Player slums at gym. Um, where do we begin this morning, Mr. Naipe? <laughs> Well, I, I want us to there's just There's the budget, touch. there's the visit. Uh, so <laughs> uh, the visit, um, let's just begin with the visit. I, f I feel the president didn't really hammer on the main reason why I think he went to, to South Africa. Why did you say so? I think the main reason why he went to South Africa was not to sign trade agreements. The main reason why he left Nigeria was to visit the South African president and to discuss the xenophobic attack. Well, you know, this is a state visit that had already been planned yeah. before it's, the It has already been planned, visit. but, you know, as a sensitive government, you should have keyed into the, 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 the happenings of the moment. I think it should have narrowed that visit to drive home the point that every Nigerian life counts instead of signing trade agreements. When the people that you are signing these trade agreements don't really have value for your citizens. How many South Africans have been um, taken to court in regards of xenophobic of this xenophobic attack? How you know many four hundred arrests have been made? How many have Bruno. been taken to court? How many are facing trial? That's what we should be asking. It's not coming to the air and telling us you arrested four hundred people. How many of them have been taken to court? So shouldn't he have gone at all? No, no. He should have. I'm not saying he shouldn't have gone. The signing of those agreements is um, shouldn't have overshadowed. It has overshadowed the whole thing. What you should have, the, what you should have dealt with there was the, the safety and the security of Nigerians more than all this um, showmanship they are doing in South Africa. You well, know, it says uh, xenophobia victims may get compensation. That gives an indication that there the was mention. My dear, forget that one. Let's go to another thing. That's not going to work. Let's go to another. Why are you so confident it's not going to work? It's not going to work. You know, the last time I was here, I said the way you treat your people at home determines the way they will treat them outside. You understand what I'm saying? You? So all the people they, Boko, they have been killing in Nigeria and all those, how many of them have this government compensated? You know, so this is a government that don't obey court orders and you are going to somebody's country to tell them to... to to compensate your people. These are all political, these are all showmanship. It's not going to work. Maybe we should just go to the Okorocha story. So what are your thoughts on the Okorocha story? I think it's a good, it's, it's a good one. Actually, imagine the Minister of Labor is saying that um, they cannot pay the minimum wage. If they have to pay, they have to, they have to sack some, some workers. You know, it's so sad. You know, but if we can reduce the number of um, law, I don't think we need a bicameral legislation. 
legis uh, legislative system. We need, either we have, I think the Senate is okay. We need at least one person to represent the state. By so doing, you will cut down costs. You have about 300 and something House of Rep members and 109 senators. It's, it's too expensive. I think it's, it's, it's what, uh, if the, the, the members of the, of, the, uh, of the House of Assembly and the Senate can pass the law and make it a, a just one unicameral system, I think it will be okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's right to say that he's almost leading by example. No, yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think it's a good one. Okay, so uh, what are your thoughts? Any other story catching your attention here? Six uh, girls abducted from Kaduna School. That's uh, showing us. Uh, mm, that's not a news. That's not a new story. It's insecurity. a normal. It's a normal thing. So no, we, we cannot should... normalize. I'm sorry, but we cannot uh, normalize issues like this. I am not normal. I'm not no, one normalizing I mean, it. Yeah, my dear, I'm not know, one normalizing you know, it. We must be conscious not to go, get to the point where we feel. It I is am not. Okay. I am not a security chief. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so unfortunate that we come on air and we keep analyzing and discussing things, and the people that are supposed to be covering these things are not. But we not, must bring it to the fore. No, we are, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to me. I don't want to major on it because but we have to talk about it. It's national issues. That's why it's that's, a national That's what I'm telling you. That me, mm -hmm. it's not worth talking about. Do you know why? Because the president has refused to do what he needs to do. The service chiefs have not been held accountable. They are not doing their jobs. And we will keep sitting here and talking how many killed, how many kidnapped. I beg, let's talk something better. No, I mean, I'm sorry to quite disagree with you because these are national issues. If the paper is talking about abduction, it means I am not, I am not trivializing this yeah, issue. What, I, I but what I am to, saying I is that to to it that shows that the security chiefs have failed and the president have refused to act. We have been saying this, you have been saying this, everybody has been saying this. And they are not doing anything about it. Maybe we should just close the matter. The truth of the matter is mm. that we cannot stop talking about it because there are national issues. That That's why I mean, you can be talking about people. it, but me, I don't want to. I don't want to dwell on it. So mm. you have no thoughts on security issues? Security issues. I've told you my thoughts. Okay. The sex service chiefs have failed. The president have failed to hold them accountable by changing them. So let's go to the next story. Well, uh, this, uh, grab a copy of uh, the Nation newspaper and find out for yourself. Again, it says six girls uh, have been abducted from Kaduna School, showing, again, indicating the issues of uh, security in the nation. Please find uh, for yourself a copy and know what it's talking about uh, in depth. And then Buhari to, uh, Buhari to present 10.2 trillion budget on Tuesday. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, Why so? It's funny because the the present budget. What is the percentage of compliance and implementation? You know, I'm just so tired of some of these headlines that you know. You become, can't be tired of no, no, no. What I'm saying issues. is that no, 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 no. What I'm saying is that it's becoming a kind of normal discussion. You, we, we have a, we had a budget, uh, the last budget which we are still running. What? is the percentage of the implementation. And now we are talking about 2020 budget. So it's, it's just the same old thing. Because until you can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different result. You know, you are saying you are giving you are 10 point something to a trillion. What have you done in the past four years? your budget, what, what is the impact of your budget on the common Nigerian man? You know, the, see, let me tell you, my dear, there's something about me. I don't know how to pretend. The Nigerian story is becoming very boring. And we need to, I just pray that God will help us and give us leaders that will change this narrative. So I just, the 10 points, uh, he's going to present it on, uh, is on, it Tuesday? on Tuesday. When he presents it, then we'll see the breakdown. Uh, let's let him present it first, then we can begin to analyze what he's presenting. Now, on the back of the Nation newspaper, uh, we'll move on to that. And you see there's a columnist there, and uh, General Akin, Rade, Akin Rinade at 80, Courage, Commitment, and Consistency. Please grab a copy of the Nation newspaper and find out what that is about. And then we have up for review again this day newspaper. And it says, FIRS reports states uh, revenue collection jumps to 1.6 trillion naira from 800 billion naira. 
Bankers Back CBN's initiative to boost lending to economy. That's on page eight of uh, this newspaper. The first, the first one on the FIRS is on the first page, but continued on page eight. Now, stakeholders urge Buhari to implement Police Trust Fund Act. Call for composition of board members. Now, businesses update as Nigeria, South Africa, mend relations, sign 32 deals. Open your economy for Nigerians, Buhari tells Ramaphosa. And there we can see a picture story uh, further down of uh, president, the two presidents and our own foreign uh, affairs minister, uh, Geoffrey Onyema there. And then the, uh, there is the story of gunmen again abduct six schoolgirls, two teachers from Kaduna, uh, school. That's that story. It's on page five of this day newspaper. Uh, please find out what it is about. So, any thoughts on this? I think the new story here is the FIRS report. Well, since you since you want me to to weigh in on the security issue, I just feel this. You no, know, it's essential. It's not me no, wanting. No, it's no, essential. no. You you want me to weigh on it, it's essential despite the fact that I have refused it. to. But um, it's so unfortunate that this is still happening, despite the fact that the Northern State governors are kind of negotiating with these bandits, negotiating with these kidnappers, trying to see how they can stop this, their nefarious activities. And it's unfortunate that these things are still happening. But this is what is going to happen. When you continue to negotiate with criminals, when you continue to negotiate with terrorists, when you continue to negotiate with kidnappers, it shows them that they, that business is lucrative because when they when they get some few people, you will call them to table, you will give them money, and then they will go. Other people will have to come into the same business. But so unfortunately, this same government don't want to negotiate with people that have different opinion from what they have. Imagine this same government have refused to grant, to obey court orders on some individuals that have been granted court orders. but. Fortunately, they are negotiating with terrorists, bandits, and kidnappers. Did you say fortunately? So, sorry, unfortunately. Sorry, okay. thank you. They are negotiating with terrorists, bandits, and uh, kidnappers. It shows you that um, the government is not serious. That means that if I wake up tomorrow and if I have the gods, I can pick up arms and then kidnap some few people, and then the government will negotiate with me and give me some, some money, and I may retire, and then start up a business. So it's, 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 it's interesting. They are not serious yet. When we are serious, we will know what to do. Mm. Still on security, of course. Mm. There, there are efforts, but of, we need to mm. be, uh, you know, be, be up security and do better. We could be better as a nation Definitely. in terms of security. Definitely. I would agree to that. Okay. Mm. So at the back page of this day is another column, uh, columnist, uh, Emeka Omuka. Taxation in the era of global information exchange. Uh, and with the picture of the FIRS uh, chairman, Mabatunde Faul at this grab a copy of this day newspaper and find out what this is about also in details and then we'll move to the punch quickly and it says nigeria's fresh appeal won't stop asset seizure that's the p and id story and you find that story on page two already displayed there on your screen and up you see car raid will continue until dealers obey law. This is customs uh, saying, warning uh, very sternly there, and you find the story on page 27. Repay our support, uh, open your economy, Buhari tells South Africa. That's on page two. And then Oshibajo alleged uh, cabal behind corruption allegations. That's a bishop uh, on page 19. Now, Senate raises 2020 budget to 10.7 trillion naira. Buhari presents estimates on Tuesday, and that details of the story is on page 33 of the Punch newspaper. And positioning, positioning oneself for 2023 is playing God. Uh, Oshomole says that on page 10. And then we have a picture story also here uh, of bridge of Abuakar Tafawa Belewa University, Bauchi, which collapsed in August. And Nigerian Army engineers reconstructing the bridge. Uh, that's, picture story, that's a picture story uh, there displayed. And then Assembly accuses Amazon of tampering with local government funds. That's on page 19 of the Punch newspaper. And gunmen kidnap six pupils, uh, two teachers in Kaduna State. And that's on page 14. Now, cow's death. Ondo Monarch uh, headsman signed peace deal. You find that 
on page 11. What are your thoughts on any of the stories? Well, concerning the PNID, you know, I, I think um, the courts are clear, you know, that um, some certain security guarantees have to be, some certain sum have to be paid, security deposits, you know, while the application, um, the appeal application is going on. So let's see what um, our Nigerian lawyers, the federal government lawyers can do to see if they can um, stop these payments. But um, whatever happens, um, it just shows that um, we, we didn't act on time, because if we have acted on time, we won't be going through all this. Um, but do you think that there is a step forward from where we were when yeah. this whole thing Yeah, broke? there is a step forward. At least we have, we have appealed, and then the courts have said, OK, you have appealed, but you have to pay this sum of money before the appeal is um, continued. So let's see. It's at least the federal government, although the, the, the step is late, but they have taken a step. So let's um, hope that um, they know what they are doing and then they can get us out of this mess. OK, uh, so. Um, uh, and they are mostly issue. Yeah, they that's are on page 19. Are, yeah, on page 19. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, the problem I have with this, uh, our people, is we pay lip service. So Which of your people? What the Nigerian you okay. people, our people, when I mean as Nigerians, we pay lip service to so many things. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have facts and evidence, that this man has been shortchanging the local government um, in his state. And the LCDA. And the LCDA has filed a suit against him. He's a senator. He doesn't have immunity anymore. Take him to court and let the court determine what they need to do to him. It's, it's not enough to just come on the papers and begin to say all these things without result. We See, until we begin to hold people accountable for their actions, this country cannot move forward. You know, we have so much so much uh, panels, so much reports, and yet there are no actions to follow. So until we get into actions and begin to hold these people to account, we will not, we will not um, this country cannot move forward, you know? And the level of impunity that these people get away with, it shows that Nigeria is, is if, if care is not taken, Nigeria is sitting on a keg of gunpowder, because it shows that you can do whatever you like and go, and there are people, the youth are angry, the people are angry. And when this anger will be unleashed, only God knows if we'll be able to sleep in our houses. Oh, we hope to be able to sleep in our houses. Anyways, um, the back page of the Punch newspaper, again, is a columnist. Notes from a round table on xenophobia, Afrophobia. Finally, Abraham picks England ahead of Nigeria. That's the sports news on page 45. So grab a copy. <laughs> Do you want to say something there? My dear, uh, well, if, I, if, I, if I speak now, you will. Well, I think uh, the young man has made his decision. You know, um, it's, so, it's so unfortunate. No, it's so, it's so unfortunate that this country, we, we don't assist you when you are growing. But when you are grown and you are made, we want you to come and give back to the society, you know. So we need to learn how to invest in our people. Then our people will now learn how to give back, you know, to our society. That way it will almost be natural. To yeah, it will be natural. So the guy has done the right thing, I think, because, um, you know, England has been so good to him. They have helped him, you know. You can't reap where he didn't sow. Mm -hmm. You can't trip where you didn't so. So I think he has made the right decision. I'm so happy for him. All right. The mm -hmm. Vanguard newspaper now. And it says, EFCC to Mena, provide details of how you spend 17 billion Naira pensions funds. That's on page 7. And reduce number of senators uh, and reps of Koracha advices on page 15. Gunmen raid Kaduna school, uh, kidnap six girls and two teachers. That's a huge story uh, running across uh, the papers. You find that also on page eight. NAS approves NFEF and FSP recommends 10.73 trillion Naira 2020 budget. You find details of that story on page 19 of the Vanguard newspaper. And customs on offensive seals of car mats uh, nationwide. That story is on page 5. 110 car mats shut down in the north. Customs, uh, customs men raid Abuja CBD. Car sellers wail, alleged custom out to ruin their businesses. Pay duty, retrieve impounded cars, customs say to them in response. And then again, the picture story of the 80th of uh, 
Akin, Akin Rinade retired there. And then uh, 344 old tortoise dies in Ogbomosho. That's on page six. As again, a piece of history lost. Uh, Buhari Ramaphosa how to, uh, vowed to prevent further xenophobic attacks on page 41. And then, don't tax the poor. Ndume tells federal government. And that's on page uh, 17. Minimum wage Oshiba Joy Indige and TUC to meet in Aso Rock. And that's on page 9. And again, we have the story of the Olympian Isaac Promise who died in the U.S. He died at the gym. Um, he slumped and died. May God rest him there. And so, what are your thoughts? Customs, that's the big story yeah, of yeah. the Bangladesh newspaper. Yeah, I think, you know, there is something about when you, when you do what is right, you know, you will have no reason to complain whether the process is wrong or right. What I mean is this. People are complaining that the customs should have checked the inflows of this car at the borders or at the port, you know. But that does not excuse you to buy a car that doesn't have a custom duty paid on that car, you know? So what the custom is doing, I think it's okay. By me, that's my opinion, you know? Because if I want to buy a car, I must make sure that that car, the custom duty for that car has been paid. And I don't know if there is a web, if there is a platform where people can check custom duty uh, papers to make sure that they are authentic. Because some people can forge custom papers to sell a car. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I don't know if the custom has a platform where people can lodge in custom papers for verification, for clearing, just as you lodge your check for clearing. I think the custom too should have a portal where people can lodge in their cost, the custom duty on a car they want to buy for clearance. Once that clearance is given, then they can go ahead and buy it. But I think if you buy a car that doesn't have a custom duty paid on it, anytime you pay for it, I think it's okay. Okay. Mm. Anytime yeah. you pay for it, it's okay. Okay, so we see a story here of EFCC to me now. Do you have any thoughts on that? No, yes. Let's provide details of how you spent... Um... Yes, let him provide it. And if he cannot provide those details, let us for once see that, you know, we have a high-profile... Uh, uh, a a high-profile corruption case tried and logically concluded. If Mena cannot prove how he spent those monies, you understand me, I think he should go, for, go in for a very long time. But I don't think this, the government may have the willpower to do that. But let's see what happens. Okay, in the interest of time, we have uh, one paper here also, which is The Guardian, uh, confusion over customs clampdown on auto dealers. Just what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Senate raises 2020 budget from 9.12 trillion to 10. Uh, 0.729 trillion. Please grab a copy. And of course, uh, one interesting thing on The Guardian today is we have our very own program, The Advocates, featured on The Guardian. And you can see already displayed there with a wonderful title, Guardian Angels. That's a Mekamba, a Kene, Chooks, um, Uche, and um, Kabiru, I believe. Anyways, so those are Seidu, uh, Seidu, those are the advocates from uh, Plus TV Africa. This is another opportunity for you to tune in on Plus TV Africa and to watch the advocate there that is also featured on The Guardian. So pick a copy of The Guardian among all other newspapers uh, that we have uh, we have looked at this morning and uh, get for yourself in details what it is about. There is complete sports here, but in the interest of time, we will request that you get copies of complete sports and all of the other newspapers and read for yourself in details what uh, the headlines are about. And many thanks, uh, Moses Naekpe, for yes. being with me this morning thanks and for sharing me. your thoughts. And so this is where we call it a wrap here on Off the Press. We will do this again from next week, Monday to Friday, the same time here on Plus TV Africa, 8.30 a.m. I am Amaka Okoye. <laughs>